my pleasure to bring the Word of God today, and I really got some good news for us. And I know that everybody sure could use some good news right now. And uh, as I was browsing through my faith book, I hope you got that. Browsing through my faith book, I come across this text that, uh, that blessed me, and I want to share it with you. And I've delivered this message before, uh, but the Lord has taken me back to this text for today. And our text is found in Judges chapter 1, and uh, our subject today is from this text. Uh, this was at a time when the children of Israel uh, were under the leadership of Joshua, had come into the land of Canaan, which was referred to as the promised land. <clears throat> And that land that had been promised them, that land that had been delivered, uh, they had been delivered to by God, it was a land that flowed with milk and honey, a place where they could prosper. And that land had become their inheritance, divided among the 12 tribes of Israel. And if you have read the exodus of this people, delivered from slavery in Egypt, you know, at first it was under the leadership of Moses and by the mighty hand of the Lord and through many miracles of provision. And, of course, through those years of deliverance, there were years of testing and times of uh, just enduring. And they had finally arrived. Uh, and one of their notable leaders at the time of our text for this people was the man Caleb. A man described in the scripture by the Lord himself as a man with another spirit. He had faithfully followed the word and the promises of the Lord through the deliverance and the exodus. And he was promised an inheritance in the land uh, of Canaan, in the promised land. So actually, Caleb had been sent into this land many years prior as a spy for Moses. And at that time, he passionately reported that he believed that the Lord had given them the land, so much so that he declared uh, in his report and in his faith, he said, give me this mountain. As a spy, he viewed Hebron and he, he said, I want that land. That's the piece of property that I want. And he made that proclamation, give me this mountain. So through the years, Caleb remained full of faith and passion and determination to receive all that the Lord had promised him. So then when it came time to possess this land, Caleb received his portion and Hebron was given to Caleb as a divine inheritance. In that continued conquest of the land, Caleb promised his daughter, Aksha, uh, to whoever would capture the city of Debur, formerly known as Kirjath Zephyr, he said, whoever conquers that city, I will uh, give my daughter Aksha to them. And the one that arose to the occasion was a man by the name of Othniel. And he did so, and he conquered that city, and he received Caleb's daughter Aksha as his wife. Caleb gave his daughter a portion of Negva, which was the land in the south, as a dowry. So uh, not only did Othniel receive a wife, he received some land to own as well as a part of the dowry, the gift that uh, Caleb gave his daughter. So if you can imagine this in your mind, uh, this newlywed couple are going to make their home, Aksha, the daughter of the famous Caleb, and Othniel, this courageous warrior leader whose name actually meant powerful one. So they're like this perfect couple. They're like uh, this perfect couple from a perfect background, both of them. And they're like building their home in this perfect location. And they're doing their perfect thing. They're living in their perfect ideal life in the land of the South. And that's when we read our text in Judges 1, verse 14 through 15. And it came to pass when she, Aksha, came to him, Othniel, her husband, that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted from off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What will you? Or what do you want? Verse 15. 
And she said unto him, Give me a blessing. Give me a blessing. For you have given me a south land. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. So I want you to get this picture with me. Caleb gives his daughter and his son-in-law the south land. And it seems like everyone is going to live happily ever after. I mean, it's all good. It's Caleb's daughter. It's Othniel. He gives them this land. It's the south land. But uh, the south land looked good. And it was a portion of the promised land. It was a portion of that land that flowed with milk and honey. Actually, the land that Caleb gave Othniel and Aksha was uh, a land whose uh, the hills were full of copper. It had potential for wealth and success. So can you imagine uh, Aksha saying, oh, thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. It's all good. Or is it? What we find in the scripture account, and we know from geography in the land, is that that land given by Caleb to his daughter and son-in-law only had an, barely enough water to survive on. So recognizing this, or discovering this by experience, Aksha and Othniel approached Father Caleb, and Caleb, discerning that his daughter had a need, he said, uh, you know, my daughter, my son, what, what do you want? And that's when Aksha just blurted it out. She said, give me a blessing. Now, a little side note here. I just wonder, where did this girl get this kind of boldness and this kind of faith? Well, you just got to remember who her father was. Her father was Caleb. It was her father who spoke directly to God and everyone else and said, give me this mountain. And I'm just thinking as I read this that faith can be passed from one generation to another. And so parents, we need to express our faith, don't we? We need to exemplify to our children that God will come through and God will keep his promise. So I'm just thinking that, that uh, this girl had that kind of faith because she learned it from her daddy. And so here we have Aksha coming to her, her daddy, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit here uh, just for the sake of the message, but she would say something like, Daddy, thank you for the land. And Daddy, we've been getting by, but Daddy, there's only enough water there for us to get by. There's only enough water in the land that you gave us to maintain life. And all we can really do is sustain our daily life. And daddy, without more water, we won't be able to prosper. And daddy, I had two daughters. I have two daughters, so I understand the, the language here, right? Daddy, without more water, we won't be able to grow any crops. Daddy, without more water, we won't be able to have livestock. And daddy, with no crops and no livestock, that means no income, and that means no wealth. So daddy, give me a blessing. Give me springs of water. Give me life-sustaining water. I need fresh water that comes from the depth of the earth. We need springs that feed up from the secret veins and conduits and gush out into the oasis. Daddy, we need water. We need water that will refresh us and keep us alive. We need water that will cause us to prosper. Daddy, we can't go without this water. We need these springs. So daddy, give me a blessing. And she was referring uh, to the water as a blessing. So what did her father do? The scripture tells us Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. And if you look at that closely, what he really did was he gave her more than what she asked for. He gave her more than what she asked for. He gave her this gift. He gave her this blessing. So let me, let me recap this here for the sake of the message today. Number one, 
she had some land. Secondly, she came to her father. She actually rode her donkey to get to her father. And, and she wasn't totally content with the land that was given to her. And number four, her father said, what do you want? Number five, she said, give me a blessing. Give me springs of water. And number six, her father gave her more than what she asked for. He not only gave her the high springs, he gave her the low springs. He gave her the south springs and he gave her the north springs. So hopefully you and I can apply this text to our lives and allow me to give some insight that is not received by casual reading of this text. Rather, it's been revealed to this preacher by the Holy Spirit. When Caleb gave his daughter and son-in-law this portion of land as a wedding gift, it was like a starter land, a land that could sustain life, a land on which they could build their first home, a land on which they could begin commerce and a land on which they could begin a family. A land in which they could, you know, uh, get by. They could probably buy a new ride, a new donkey. Uh, a land and a house and a new donkey and some children. It all looked good, but there just wasn't enough water. Let me ask you this question. Do you think that Caleb didn't know this? Do you think that Caleb didn't know this land? Do you think that Caleb didn't know that this land lacked an abundance of water? Do we think that Caleb was just trying to look generous, but really not? Do you think Caleb was surprised when his kids came back with this request? I propose to us that Caleb knew full well that this land only had enough water to sustain life and maintain life, but not enough water to prosper. I propose that Caleb knew this land very well. He knew it didn't have enough springs. Caleb was fully aware of the natural resources available and what was lacking in this land that he gave. I want you to notice that when Aksha came to her father and she said, Daddy, give me a blessing. It didn't take two seconds for Caleb to respond to this request. It didn't take Caleb two seconds to respond to this request for springs of water. It didn't take Caleb two seconds to give her what she needed and what she asked for. And please notice for sure, he gave her more than enough. And if I could preach just for a little bit here today, I want to say this, first of all, God, our Father, the Father of all, who gives life to every man, He has given everyone life. He's given everyone a life to live. And I'm referring, first of all, to the natural life. He's given every life a land, if I can say it that way. He's given every life a world to live in. And in this land, in this natural life, in this natural living and natural existence, the Lord has provided all things for us to enjoy. Relationships and experiences and discoveries and material things and natural things. He's allowed every man, woman, boy and girl some time, He's allowed us all some time to live and experience life. And let me make it very plain here today. In the natural, in our flesh, and in our minds, there are many things that bring satisfaction and reward to us. There are rewarding relationships. There are satisfying accomplishments. There are satisfying successes in this life. And there's also our good that we can contribute to our society and our families. So there is a certain reward and satisfaction and fulfillment that comes from doing well and success and accomplishing and giving and helping others or uh, achieving personal goals or making our world a better place. I understand that. I get that. And then there is this carnal aspect of this same principle. 
finding natural satisfaction from indulgence in pleasures, finding fulfillment and satisfaction from carnality and sensual satisfactions. And then there's satisfaction from attaining, uh, attaining material gain and wealth and possessions and or attention or the applause of men. And then there is that pleasure or satisfaction of just maintaining, of just getting by, simple, simply living life. Uh, I ain't hurting nobody. I'm a good person. I'm better than some people. They may not be as good as others. Uh, it's all good. I'm just, I'm just getting by. I'm just living life. Well, let me ask a question. Do you think that our Heavenly Father is allowing our time in life? Do you think He's allowing our exist, existence in the land that He gave us? At, while He's doing that, do you think that He knows that all the things in this world will sustain us and give us a certain level of satisfaction and enjoyment and fulfillment to some degree? Sure he does. He created everything that is. He made this this way. He gave it to us this way because he knows that in this life there is not enough water in this land. He knows that at some point in time, at some point in the heart, in the soul of every man, woman, boy, and girl, there will be an understanding. There will be an enlightenment, a moment, like Caleb's daughter, Aksha, when she said, Daddy, thank you for the land. You've been good to me. Thank you. You've given a portion of the land to live in. Thank you. you you've given us a portion of land to live in, and it has enough water to maintain and sustain us but we need more. We need more water. Job 32 verse 8 says this. There is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding. You see, every soul at some point will realize there's more to life than just living. There's more to life than just doing. There's more to life than just living and doing and getting by and dying. This preacher's reaching for somewhere, someone today. The Lord's love and mercy is reaching for someone right now. You've been living, you've been getting by, you've been getting through, you're maintaining, you've been experiencing life, some good times, some rough times. You've been accomplishing some things and attaining some good things. You've been winning some, and true, you've been losing sometimes. You've tried a lot of things in this life, good things, right things, honest things. You've received a certain level of reward and satisfaction from these. You've tried a lot of things in life, some just to fulfill lusts and cravings and indulgences. You've tried so many things that this world and sin has to offer. You've tried money, you've tried success, you've tried recognition, you've tried the approval and the applause of men, and yes, all of the above. You're still getting by, and you're still living. But while you're doing that, your heavenly Father is waiting on you. He waits on you because he knows all of those things, all of those natural things, will only satisfy the natural appetites. All the consumption and use of all those things things that we thought would satisfy us. He knows that when we've tried them all, 
that we will still be thirsty. He knows that when we've tried everything in the land, we'll still be searching for a spiritual water. And like Caleb, when his daughter came to him, he was ready and willing to give her what she really needed. And she said, Father, give me a blessing. Give me the springs of water that we need. And I'm here to declare today that our Heavenly Father is willing to give the living water to whoever asks for it. And He has provided this living water through Jesus Christ. In John chapter 4, you'll read of Jesus meeting a woman at Jacob's well. And this woman had tried many of the pleasures of life, just like everybody else, the natural life, the things that were available to her. Jesus met this woman, and this woman had tried all these things. And Jesus said to her, if you would only ask, while they're sitting at a natural well, if you would only ask, I would give you a drink of living water. Of course, she didn't understand at first. And she asked this question, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well? She was still thinking about natural water. In John chapter 4, verse 13, we begin to read what happened next. Jesus answered her and said, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give them shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give them shall be in them a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And that woman said, Sir, give me this water. This water that doesn't come from a well. I came to get water from the well today, but give me this water that you speak of. And she left that meeting with Jesus that day, and she went back to her home place and to her neighborhood, and she said, come see a man who knew everything about me. Well, I've got some really good news for us today. Jesus knows everything about us. He knows everything about you. And this living water that Jesus said that he spoke of to this woman is for anyone and it's for everyone and it's still available today. What is this spiritual water? What is this living water? In John chapter 7, Jesus is at a Jewish celebration or feast. And during that feast, the people would remember many, many years ago how the Lord had brought the nation of Israel out of Egyptian bondage and slavery and brought them to this promised land that I referred to earlier. And during that feast, for the six days, the first six days, the priests would carry golden vessels of water into the temple area and they would pour that water out and that water represented the blessing of God and the provision of God and they celebrated and they worshiped God and they thanked God because he had delivered their people from slavery. But while that feast was going on, Jesus attended in verse 37 of John 7, it says, in the last day, in the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried saying, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. It was at that very moment that Jesus was revealing himself as the living water. Jesus went on to say, He that believeth on me as the scripture hath said, out of his belly, out of his innermost being, out of his soul shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So what is this drink? that Jesus referred to with the woman at the well? What is this drink that Jesus declared uh, at the feast in John chapter seven? This living water truly is a portion of his spirit, the spirit of Christ 
within our hearts. This living water that satisfies the heart and the soul. This living water is a spiritual drink that satisfies. Can I say it this way? This spiritual drink is the blessing that the world can't give us and the world can't take away. This spiritual drink is the gift that it is joy the world can't give you and the world can't take it away. This spiritual drink brings peace that passes all understanding. This spiritual drink enables us to love everybody. This spiritual drink, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, this living water. I'm talking about a life that will never die, a hope that cannot be taken away, a resource that can never be exhausted, and an inner strength that is always present. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the Spirit of the Lord that's available to anyone who asks, and it's available to all who ask. Jesus spoke about this in John chapter 3 in his conversation with Nicodemus. He said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He said, except a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. We need this drink because this drink has to do with our salvation. This drink has to do with us entering the kingdom of God. Let me read to you from Luke chapter 11, verse 9. Jesus said, If you will ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receives. Everyone that seeks, finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. Verse 11 of Luke 11. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish for a fish, will he give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Jesus said in verse 13, he said, if you then being earthly know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. Which one receives the Holy Spirit? The one that asks him. And when one receives the Holy Spirit, it's like springs in the desert. This spiritual drink is not merely a temporary relief or a temporary satisfaction like the things of this world. It is a lasting flowing river within. This spiritual drink is the blessing and the provision of the Lord. In the Old Testament, Isaiah spoke prophetically about this spiritual drink, this living water, Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 12, verse 2, he says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and song. He also is become my salvation. Verse 3, the prophet said, Therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. I declare to us today, just to put us in remembrance of the word of God, that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is our salvation. Jesus Christ is the living water. Does anyone want that blessing? Does anyone want that gift? Does anyone want to ask your heavenly father for a blessing today? Is anyone that's heard this message, do you want to ask Jesus Christ to become your salvation today? Like the woman at the well, all you have to do is say, give me this water. Whatever is happening in your life, whatever your circumstances, the offer belongs to you. You can receive this living water. If you have viewed this message and you're thirsty and you desire the gift of the Holy Ghost, let me conclude with this portion of Scripture. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, the Apostle Peter said this, Repent and be baptized every one of you 
in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If your life is filled with bad news, it was just overcome with good news. If your life has been a life that's just been getting by and you've just been maintaining and living and doing and expecting no more, this message is for you today because the Lord has springs, wells, rivers of living water that he wants to give you. Can we pray right now? And may we pray somewhat like Caleb's daughter. Lord, give me a blessing. Give me the springs of living water. Lord, I'm tired of living life and just experiencing from the, the things that this world can offer me and the things that this world brings to me or I can attain to satisfy a natural life. I need a spiritual life. I need to be filled with your spirit. I need to have that living water flowing through me as the scripture declares I'm entitled to. We pray for your blessing today upon everyone that's heard this message. And I pray God that it can be good news to the soul that's thirsty. And I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for connecting with us today and continue to do so while we're under these adverse circumstances. View us on Facebook and website and keep connected. Keep encouraging someone. We're going to get through this crisis in Jesus' name. Amen.